man and a dog. <coughs> All right, guys. It is a cold winter night here in the middle of May. Good Lord, I think it's heading to about 25 degrees tonight. Here uh, in the Arctic wasteland of Bugs in a Jar Farm. On Wednesday night, May 17th, 2023, hopefully this will be the last time I see frost on my pumpkin till next fall. But uh, anyway, well, good Lord, I see this computer is already eating everything. Yeah, could one thing go right? Come on. Oh, Jesus. It just, it, it, this crap never ends with the technological breakdown here on the road to hell. Uh, anyway, where was I? Oh, yes. Today's chronicle <coughs> of the collapse. I want to thank my good buddy and uh, fellow collapsitarian. I think he email me this with a slug line, uh, great minds think alike. So, uh, but before we get into what Elliot Jacobson calls his moment of doom of the day, uh, we're going to hear a couple of more quotes on overpopulation. And if anybody thinks that overpopulation is only a subject uh, from 2023, we're going to hear from Aristotle. What did the, one of the great minds of the ancient world, uh, what did Aristotle have to say about overpopulation? <clears throat> one would have thought, <coughs> yes, one would have thought <coughs> that it was even more necessary to limit population than property. The neglect of this subject, meaning overpopulation, which was being completely ignored in the overpopulated uh, Greek civilization, part of the reason that uh, the, there is no longer, you know, that it collapsed. The neglect of this subject which in existing states is so common, is a never failing cause of poverty among the citizens. And poverty is the parent of both revolution and crime. And uh, we're gonna go back 200 years before Aristotle, when the population of this planet was probably, who knows, well less than 500 million people. We're going to hear from writer and theologian Tertullian. <coughs> Take it away, Tertullian. Quote, The strongest witness is the vast population of the earth to which we are a burden and she scarcely can provide for our needs. Well stated Terulian and Aristotle, but now that we have uh, talked about what this essay is all about, in case you don't realize this, we're going to get to uh, Eliot's moment of doom from resilience.org. Uh, I think I've read items by this fellow Rob Lewis before. This is Rob Lewis on uh, resilience.org. <clears throat> Fast tracking extinction, the rush to streamline permitting for green for green energy. Yes, I was just reading uh, some article about, uh, let's see, about the Biden administration 
the U.S. Forest Service, as I was talking about, giving a permit to this giant gas pipeline of fracked natural gas in uh, the Jefferson National Forest in Virginia. Then I was reading about uh, Joe Biden uh, fast-tracking the permitting of this giant lithium mine in Nevada. Then I was reading an article uh, about the fast tracking of permitting these giant wind farms that are killing thousands of eagles. Even Donald Trump uh, understands better uh, than the Department of the Interior fast tracking the permits to these goddamn eagle killing wind farms and you know, guys, whether it's gas fossil fuel pipelines across our national forest, whether it's uh, wind farms killing eagles, solar farms frying turtles in their shells, giant lithium mines destroying mountains, uh, it, it doesn't matter. Fossil fuels, green, revel you are going to see... Uh, the fast tracking of all of this crap. Uh, Joe Biden leaving Donald Trump in the dirt. He, even Donald Trump uh, understands uh, how, how these damn windmills kill eagles. But anyway, take it away. Rob Lewis, <coughs> tell us about fast tracking extinction via the rush to streamline permitting for green energy. <clears throat> With more than $300 billion in the pipeline, I love that, in the pipeline for alternative energy infrastructure, which is known to require huge amounts of land, Americans now confront the ecological reality of what all that industrial development means for their non-human cohabitants trying to survive on America's increasingly fragmented landscapes. A recent study by the organization NatureServe throws the matter into grim relief. <clears throat> Biodiversity in the United States is in crisis, it says, with 40% of animals in the U.S. headed for extinction, along with 34% of plants of America's ecosystems, 41%, quote, are at risk of collapse. The main cause, say the authors, is land conversion, otherwise known as habitat destruction, describing it as, quote, a major contributor to the alarming numbers of species at risk, close quote. This should not surprise anyone. Animals need homes, places to find food, and migratory pathways. When we damage land, we damage all of that, and many things die. The gradually warming atmosphere certainly does not help, but it is nothing compared to the direct effects of bulldozers and chainsaws. Hmm, this sounds like book hermit. Might, uh, maybe it, Book Hermit, is your real name Rob Lewis? <clears throat> Species don't just mysteriously disappear, we disappear them. A few square acres or kilometers at a time, and the pace is increasing. Nature Serves CEO Dr. Sean O'Brien describes his own organization's report as terrifying. 
So what does all this have to do with Joe Biden saving the planet from fossil fuels when he's not permitting fossil fuel pipelines across national forest? <clears throat> hate to say I told you so about Joe Biden unleashing an assault on our public lands. Uh, that's going to make Donald Trump jealous. Anyway, so with all of that in the background, this is the context. Collapsing ecosystems, vanishing species, and a permitting regime not nearly able to keep up, within which the American climate movement is pushing to, quote, streamline the environmental review process for what they call green, green energy. And it's not just in the U.S. This cocktail of collapsing nature, green development, and the push for streamlined permitting is happening everywhere. It appears to be too late for EU countries. According to Reuters, EU energy ministers agreed in November of 22 on, quote, emergency regulations that aim to speed up wind and solar permitting while EU officials negotiate wider measures set out in the repower EU plan. As for biodiversity, Europe is worse off than the U.S., having been at the land conversion business much longer. And then let's don't forget Bill McKibben. Last August, Bill McKibben tweeted, quote, let's reform permitting, meaning let's gut permitting. This is Bill McKibben calling for rolling back uh, environmental protections and streamlining permitting for industrial level habitat destruction. <clears throat> Let's reform permitting so we can build clean energy projects, not dirty ones, close quote, laying out a peculiar orientation to the land. It's bad to damage land for fossil infrastructure, but okay, even good when the damage is for clean energy infrastructure. As for the land itself, it disappears, reduced to a factor in a global carbon calculation, and quite a lot of land is involved. It's hard to put a firm number to all the acreage poised for development worldwide, given the many variables. But in 2019, Princeton University produced a Net Zero America report, which analyzes requirements for the lower 48 states. It predicted a range and this is a ridiculously wide range of 0.25 to 1.1 million square, square kilometers of land needed for the U.S. to reach net zero by 2050, depending on the extent of nuclear biomass carbon storage and land restriction. Since that is a big range, and to avoid quibbling over numbers, let's split it down the middle and call it 675,000 square kilometers. And um, anyway, I, which I think is a ridiculous underestimate. But anyway, for argument's sake, let's call it 675,000 square kilometers. To put 675,000 square kilometers in context, America's 
biodiversity crisis, you know, right now is currently being driven by land development equal to around 6,100 square kilometers per year. How, we must ask, will ecosystems currently unable to handle 6,100 square kilometers of land destruction per year cope with 675,000 or even 25,000 per year for 27 years, a fourfold acceleration and you know a fourfold acceleration uh, at the low end of this ridiculous uh, estimate of 25,000 square kilometers per year. Uh, already, even without fast tracking and at a fraction of proposed build out, it is causing ecological carnage as Patrick Donnelly, great basin director for the Center for Bio Biological Diversity puts it, quote, I am a triage nurse in a desert endangered species emergency room and we are in the middle of a patient surge, close quote. This picture paints its own conclusion. Fast tracking renewable infrastructure in America will fast track our extinction crisis. And what's bad for America, of course, is, uh, is, is bad for the rest of the planet. If this is going on uh, here, imagine what uh, the fast tracking looks like. What, where were we talking about yesterday? Indonesia, for instance? Good God. The, the attack on this planet uh, using climate change uh, as a cover story is it, just gone in, into complete overdrive. Uh, this is why I have come to the conclusion that this green energy revolution, the, uh, the fire as opposed to the frying pan of fossil fuels is worse for the planet than fossil fuels. <clears throat> So I guess that makes me a, uh, a shill for Exxon because I am pointing out what I consider the fact to be that this green energy transition will kill this planet quicker than fossil fuels ever could. All right, where was I? This picture paints its own conclusion. Fast tracking renewable infrastructure in America will fast track our extinction crisis. I say this knowing that one of the goals of this technology is to prevent global warming levels where everything cooks, <clears throat> can you say the frying pan, regardless of what we do with the land and that much of the intention is therefore good intention, but it is critical we realize that what has brought the biosphere to this miserable state, you know, that we're looking at today <clears throat> as climate change is just beginning, has primarily been and remains our taking of land for human use. Will the patient survive the cure long enough to be saved by it? It is a legitimate question. It most certainly is, and nobody is asking it, and sure as shit nobody is answering it. It is the frying pan and the fire conundrum. <clears throat> Another problem with permitting reform has to do with science. Though the clean, though the clean 
energy narrative treats carbon emissions as the sole human cause of climate change, science has known for decades that land destruction also causes climate change, only in different ways having to do with water cycles, soil health, and vegetative cooling. It's why one of the first international scientific climate reports produced in 1970 by MIT contains an entire section devoted to, quote, the climatic effects of man-made surface change. <clears throat> Decades of research since have made those effects increasingly clear, clear. When we damage land, we damage its ability to cool climate, make clouds, produce rain, moderate temperature extremes, and absorb and store moisture against flood and drought. <clears throat> the result is higher temperatures, increased drought, and flooding, and greater climatic extremes. Sound familiar? The fact is our scientific understanding of climate is changing. More and more scientists are dissatisfied with what is increasingly derided as a CO2 only view of climate, calling for broader inclusion of water cycles <clears throat> and ecological processes in the analysis. It turns out Earth's climate is more than a physical machine with a carbon dial, as has been portrayed. Rather, <clears throat> rather it is a complex, biophysically coupled living system which science is only beginning to understand. Scientifically speaking, we need more study and more review not less. <clears throat> I'm sure uh, Joe Biden is hanging on every word that Rob Lewis is writing here. Finally, has anyone considered what fast tracking such a massive scale of industrial development would do to environmentalism? How will it continue to make moral sense to itself? The tensions already deep will only increase as more and more local people, environmentalists and otherwise, find their landscapes threatened. <clears throat> and when they realize those landscapes also help cool and hydrate their local climates while buffering drought and flood cycles, what will prevent them from thinking they have not been told the whole story? And if fast tracking disempowers their efforts to protect their lands from destruction, why should they feel anything but betrayed? Again, I realize the point of this infrastructure uh, well, other than, uh, uh, other than putting billions and billions of dollars in, in, into these giant planet-eating multinational energy corporations that own Joe Biden and every other politician. That is the number one reason. Okay. Uh, I, I can't believe that Rob Lewis is, is letting and letting these sons of bitches get off w w without even a comment. Make make no goddamn mistake. At this point, uh, th what the point of this infrastructure is all about is to make a bunch of money for a bunch of goddamn planet eaters while ramming this crap uh, down these little limp dick lefty greenies' throats. Uh, anyway. Back to Rob, since he didn't point that out, I just feel I, I had to flesh it out a little bit, Rob. Again, 
I realize the point of this infrastructure is to bring down atmospheric carbon levels. I am all for that, but when you add the fact that damaging land also damages climate, the formula gets a little muddy, and in the inevitable 10 to 20 year pulse of emissions required to manufacture, ship, and install this infrastructure, and the picture gets muddier still. <clears throat> anyway, guys, uh, this is going on and on. Uh, uh, there are, of course, better and worse ways to cite this technology, placing solar panels on rooftops, which is what I am doing right here at Bugs in a Jar Farm today and tomorrow. Placing solar panels on rooftops is better than clearing forest for solar farms. The problem though, I don't believe it, is that it is much more profitable for energy companies to clear land. So Rob does get it. It is to line the pockets of energy companies is the number one reason for all of this bullshit, bright green lies that get, that's getting rammed down our, throat, our throats. It's much more profitable for energy companies to clear land for solar farms than to haul them onto rooftops or stretch them over parking lots. And if we fast track permitting, we will lose the very leverage needed to push the development in that direction. Here we go. Republicans having pushed fast tracking for over four decades must be pitching themselves seeing Democrats now leading the charge. We can guess at the compromise being worked out. Republicans will offer Democrats their support for renewable fast tracking in exchange for Democrats allowing a certain amount of petroleum fast tracking. This is exactly what we got in this bullshit climate law when that uh, planet eater, what's his name, Joe Munchkin or whatever his name is, this is exactly what went down six months ago. It is, is this very thing he's talking about. Uh, this is the frying pan and the fire. It's these backroom deals by these, uh, by these goddamn politicians on both sides of the fence being owned by these giant energy companies. These giant energy companies don't give a damn about any of this. Uh, and, and, and it's no longer are we going to make our money out of fossil fuels or this renewables crap. It, it, it's we're going to double, uh, double the pipeline. And, and uh, everybody is going to be fast tracking all of this shit. And none of this shit would be a story if, if the population of this planet was where it was when Aristotle uh, was living on it. This is all about overpopulation. Every story, uh, every environmental story that you read is about overpopulation. There is one way to cut this crap, and, and, and that's to cut down the number of humans on this planet making the demands for this energy. Where was I? This, you know, the, these, these backroom uh, handshake deals will be presented as a win-win for the climate and the economy positive examples of bipartisanship, but the woodlands, the fields, the prairies and deserts, 
and the creatures confronted with a new wave, which I've been talking about, this attack that's unfolding in this country and on this planet, and the creatures confronted with a new wave of land conversion will pay the price, as will the local climates they help maintain. There you go. Thank you very much, Rob Lewis, for pointing out the obvious to anybody who pulls their head out of their ass and, and, and looks at this. Uh, the, these little lefties are every bit as much culpable uh, as these right-wing uh, planet eaters. There, there is no difference between AOC and Donald Trump anymore. There's too goddamn many people on this planet. There's one way to fix all of this. Anyway, I'm freezing and I need to turn on uh, my fossil fuel heater here before I freeze to death in the middle of May with, with all of this global warming. Get out there uh, and enjoy uh, fast tracking yourself into extinction while you still can. Bye guys. Yes, little dog. Are you ready to turn the heater back on? Oh, heat. Give me heat. <laughs>